In this PowerPoint, we're going to examine the basic characteristics of acid-base reactions. There are three major types of acid-base reactions. The first is a reaction between an acid and water. The second is between a base and water. And the third is a neutralization reaction between an acid and a base, and it often produces water as a product. It also often produces an ionic compound that's generically referred to as a salt. The first two reactions illustrate the basic differences between acids and bases, and we'll start there. Acids have a variety of distinct physical and chemical properties. For example, acids taste sour. That tart taste for lemons is due to citric acid. Acids also react with certain metals to produce hydrogen gas, like zinc in this picture reacting with hydrochloric acid. You can see the bubbles of hydrogen forming in the solution. Acids also tend to turn certain dyes into different colors. For example, litmus paper contains dyes that turn red in the presence of acids. But one of the most fundamental properties of all acids is that they are substances that release hydrogen ions when they are dissolved in water. When the acid dissolves in water, the hydrogen ions it produces immediately combine with a water molecule to form hydronium ions, or H3O+. So in this example, we have hydrochloric acid dissolving in water. And as it dissolves, it actually breaks apart and releases hydrogen into the solution. The hydrogen ion immediately reacts with water and produces that hydronium ion. And it leaves behind the remainder of the acid molecule, in this case, the chloride anion. All acids react with water in this way. Whether the acid is considered strong or weak, it releases hydrogen ions in solution that combine with a water molecule and produce hydronium ion. And in all of these reactions, it leaves behind an anion that's formed up of the remainder of the acid molecule. The difference between strong and weak acids is that strong acids react completely with water to produce lots of hydronium ions and the appropriate anion. Weak acids on the other hand, only a small fraction of the acid molecules actually dissociate to produce hydrogen ions and form hydronium ions and the anion. As a result, there's a lot less hydronium produced per unit of acid that's dissolved. That's why they're considered weak. In a previous PowerPoint, we mentioned that acids are considered electrolytes. When they dissolve in water, they break apart or dissociate into positively charged hydronium ions and negatively charged anions. These positive and negative charges are free to carry a current. Strong acids are considered strong electrolytes because they produce a lot of ions per unit of acid that dissolves. Weak acids, on the other hand, are considered weak electrolytes because they produce only a few ions for each unit of acid that is dissolved. Bases, as a class of compound, also have some distinct qualities. They taste bitter. Caffeine and other alkaloid compounds, like those found in coffee, are weak bases. Bases react with organic matter. Drano contains a powerful base, sodium hydroxide. And bases, like acids, turn certain dyes different colors. Where acids turn litmus red, bases tend to turn the dyes in litmus green to blue. But the most fundamental property of all bases is that they produce hydroxide ions when dissolved in water. 
Bases can produce hydroxide ion in one of two ways. Strong bases are ionic compounds that contain hydroxide ions as part of the compound, like the six strong bases that are listed here. When these substances dissolve in water, they dissociate into their ions and release the hydroxide ions into solution. So in the case of strong bases, water is the solvent, which is indicated by the AQ, but it isn't actually involved in the base dissociation. It doesn't react. It's just the medium in which the reaction happens. Weak bases, on the other hand, react with water to produce hydroxide ions. So weak bases often contain nitrogen atoms bound in the molecule, like pyridine, the molecule that's depicted here. Pyridine is an important reagent used in the manufacture of pharmaceuticals and other chemicals, and it's a base when dissolved in water. The nitrogen on the molecule tends to pull a hydrogen off of the water molecule. The net result is that the base, the pyridine, actually gains a hydrogen and a plus one charge, while the water is left as a hydroxide, an OH ion, with a negative one charge. So in this case, water isn't just the solvent, it actually reacts with the base to produce hydroxide ions. And weak bases are considered weak because not all the base molecules will react with water. In fact, usually only a tiny fraction of those base molecules react. So they tend to produce a lot less hydroxide ions per unit dissolved than a strong base would. So we've just looked at examples of the first two types of reactions, acid plus water and base plus water. In both of these types of reactions, water was a solvent and a reactant. It actually took part in the chemical reaction. In the last type of reaction, the neutralization reaction, water is a solvent and often a product as well. So a neutralization reaction is one in which an acid and a base react with each other. For example, here, hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide to produce sodium chloride and water. The products of a neutralization reaction almost always include an ionic compound formed from the interaction of the cation of the base and the anion of the acid. So let's write the net ionic equation for this last reaction. I'm going to start with the complete ionic equation and break apart anything that contains an aqueous and a Q following it into its dissociated ions. So we'll start with the acid, hydrochloric acid. And I know when an acid dissolves in water, it actually reacts with the water to produce hydronium ion and an anion. In this case, it would be chloride, the second half of the acid molecule. So that's what I write for my dissociated ions, hydronium and chloride. For my base, I have a strong base, sodium hydroxide. It's an ionic compound that dissociates into its constituent ions, which are sodium and hydroxide. On the product side, I have sodium chloride. That breaks apart into sodium and chloride ions. And finally, I have liquid water. This is a molecular compound, not an ionic compound, so we don't dissociate it into ions. I'm going to eliminate my spectator ions, anything that occurs in the same ionic form on both sides. So there's chloride and there's sodium. What remains becomes my net ionic equation. This actually isn't balanced. I need to put a 2 in front of the water to make sure there's enough hydrogen and oxygen. But now it is balanced, and this particular net ionic equation, the reaction between hydronium ion and hydroxide ion to produce liquid water is the heart of most neutralization reactions. Most neutralization reactions will give you the same exact net ionic equation. This is because this is the characteristic component of acids, hydronium ion, and the characteristic component of bases. 
In a neutralization reaction, these two characteristic components combine together to form a neutral product, in this case, liquid water. In summary, acids are substances that react with water to produce hydronium ions in solution. Strong acids dissociate completely in water, while weak acids dissociate only a small amount. Bases are substances that produce hydroxide ions in solution. Strong bases are soluble ionic compounds that contain hydroxide as the anion already. Weak bases react with water to produce hydroxide ions. When acids and bases react together, they produce an ionic compound and water. This is called a neutralization reaction.